Hello again, everyone. Today I am going to be showing you my entire Esther Brooke fountain pen collection. So uh, on top here, I have a notebook that came with my Nouveau Blue Esther Brooke Estee. So I thought I would use this notebook today because I have not used it other than to just write Esther Brooks here <laughs> in this to do a list. Um, the, the fountain pen friendly notebook supposedly seems to have pretty good paper in here, but I don't know what kind of paper it is. I don't think it's said anywhere on the notebook, but I figure since it came with it, it would be good to try it out today. So I'm going to put that off to the side for now. And I house all of these pens in an Esterbrook case. And I did want to tell you that the Esterbrook case is not my favorite fountain pen case. I mean, it's a very pretty but I don't think it's as durable as it needs to be for the way I handle my fountain pens and the way I keep my fountain pens. Um, I did end up getting this on the bottom shelf at Goulet. So it was uh, discounted from what it would normally be, but I think the leather is just a little too soft. I think it could definitely rip um, or get marks in it. Um, this top part is like has sort of a puffy feel, which is kind of strange to me, which I don't really like. The back is a little smoother, but it's the same leather, and I'm not, I mean, it, it's been doing okay. It hasn't really marked up too much, but um, but I, I think I prefer the Galen leather cases. Uh, the Galen leather cases are more inexpensive, and they're more durable, and more, more my speed as far as keeping things. This one's more of like a display case, because you can open it up, and there's, there's your Esther Brooks. Um, but I'm not a big fan of the design. I don't feel like it's very space efficient. This holds 12 and it's pretty large. Um, and so you've got these little slots for each one and they're they're not catered to the individual pens. They're pretty they're pretty well Esther Brooke Estee size, but but that's good. Um, and I'm not a big fan of this elastic that goes across because I do find myself having to pull it and adjust for different size pens. Um, so if I were to do this again, I probably would not get this case and I would get a different case, probably from Galen, because you can actually get a 20 pen case for less than this, or you could get two 10 pen cases for about the same price of this, both of which would hold more pens, obviously. But, uh, but, but if you like something that's more of a display box, this might be more your speed. So, but it's just not my speed. And that's just a personal preference. All right, um, so it has this little magnetic closure here and you've already kind of seen the preview of pens here. There is one pen, which is a hand-turned pen, which is not an Esterbrook, but I do have an Esterbrook nib in it. So that's why I have it in here today to show you these. Um, I'm gonna be te pen testing all of these except for these two vintage pens. Um, I just don't have them filled with ink. I find their filling mechanism kind of fussy and don't and I don't really like it. Um, I do have some vintage nibs on here though and I will show you those um, but I won't be doing writing samples with them. Um, these are sack fillers. Um, they're the vintage sort of dollar pens. One's a little bigger than the other but I don't I don't remember the name distinction between the two. Um, so they have a rubber sack in here that you fill by pulling the little lever here that's on the side and then once it's in a bottle of ink, you release the lever and it's supposed to pull the ink up. It's not the most efficient way of getting ink into a fountain pen and they're kind of a bear to clean. So basically that's why I didn't wanna fill these up. But they do have nice nibs on them. And what I might end up doing is just using these as sort of uh, nib holders until I get some additional Esterbrook Estes that you can put vintage Esterbrook nibs on with an adapter, as you will see. So let's go ahead and start over here. So this is a um, this is a little bit of a different size than the SD. It's a Camden model, and this is specifically the uh, composition pen, which is meant to look a little bit like a black and white composition notebook here. And I actually already wrote this with this pen. It's it's a very wet nib. This one is a. Um, a Schmidt nib, which I love. I love Schmidt nibs. They're very well made. Uh, but this is ground into a uh, journaler nib that was specialty ground for Esterbrook. And I actually have a couple of journaler nibs, so you'll be able to see the differences between the um, 
the Schmidt nib and a, a Yovo, a Yovo nib. <laughs> um, this one is way more wet than the other one. So this, so they're all Estherbrooks, so we're not going to write that again. So this is a Camden, oops, and this has kind of a gunky ink in it. So it does get a little, not the nib, that is the ink. Um, so let me get that flowing. Okay, so this is a Camden composition. And this nib is not interchangeable with the nib on the Estes. They have a different housing in them, which I was kind of disappointed to find because I wanted to swap things around, but I was not able to because this has a different housing. I could pull the nib from its uh, nib unit, but that's a little tr much trouble and I don't want to risk um, getting this nib out of tune. So this is the Camden composition. We oh my goodness. Yes, this, this particular ink Okay, with a journaler nib. Um, I had not written with this in a while and I just inked it up, but I did not clean, I did not clean the nib. So there could be <laughs> issues with that. And this ink is Diamine Smoke on the Water. which in this case looks really, really um, dark, which I guess it is kind of a dark ink. But So the, the journaler nib is uh, essentially like a stub nib or a cursive italic nib. It's kind of in between as far as smoothness goes. So it has a broader downstroke and a um, less dramatic side stroke. So you can get some line variation. Uh, I'm already seeing some bleeding on this paper, so I already don't know that I could recommend this paper all that much. I think this is probably the wettest nib that I'll be showing you, so we'll see if we can if we still get some of that fuzzing in some of the other nibs here. And I will put this closer to the camera towards the end so that you can see all of the different nibs. Um, this is also an illustration of how different washi tapes just simply, some washi tapes just do not hold a permanent marker and it wipes right off. So that's what happened to this one. <laughs> but this is, so there's going to be a few Estes. So this is an SD in the cobalt color. Um, they have a variety of uh, different colors and they do special edition colors all the time. Uh, this is not a large. This is just the regular size, which I find to be pretty large as it is. Um, and really don't feel like I need a larger pen. You can post them, but sometimes it'll pop off because it does have a, um, <clears throat> it does have sort of a spring loaded top. So when you put on your cap, you have to push it a little bit and then twist. Um, but that just means sometimes it can get a little finicky when you're trying to post it, but it works fine. And I don't find it overly back heavy. The Camden is a little bit back heavy for me posted just because it is a little bit heavier than the Estherbrook SD. Okay, so this is a vintage nib. This nib is uh, a vintage number 9668 nib, which is actually a very, very smooth nib and um, is quite, quite nice. Okay, actually this one's kind of wet as well. So this is the uh, SD cobalt with a vintage <clears throat> 9668 nib and this has the adapter so normally this would have a little section here that is the same color as this but the adapter screws on here and has its own um its own converter, which is a, a little bit of a different size. I'm actually not quite sure why they needed a different converter, but it is a little bit of a different size. So it's not interchangeable with uh, the regular converter, but once you put that on, you can screw in <clears throat> a vintage nib of your choice. On one of the vintage nibs I uh, or vintage Esther Brooks, I will uh, unscrew the nib and show you how that works. But um, these are all generally pretty lovely, I have found. Um, I did do a little bit of research before, um, before deciding to buy certain nibs. 
and basically I bought them for the aspects that I like the most. And you can find them pretty cheap, usually like 10 to $15, but now it seems like they're becoming a little more rare and they are a little bit more expensive depending on which nib you wanna get. Okay, so this ink is Robert Oster Fire and Ice. Yeah, I don't know that I would recommend this paper pretty much at all, just because <clears throat> you do get a little bit of line variation between the up, down, and side, side, but it's pretty much the same. Um, because you're not getting any of the sh the sheen that is on this ink, this diamine ink it, up here is a, sh a sheening ink. This one is also sheening, but you can't see that at all. This paper is kind of abysmal for, <laughs> for fountain pens. So don't blame this poor performance on these pens or these nibs or these inks because this is really, I can guarantee you this is the paper. But now we know. Um, you know, maybe use the book you get with your Esther Brooks with ball points, <laughs> which kind of defeats the purpose. Okay, so this is the uh, Nouveau Blue color, which I really, really like. It's kind of a uh, blue and brown. Um, eh, maybe that brown is actually more like burgundy, but I just thought this was such a lovely color, and I really, really like it. I clearly am skewing more towards blues in my choices here. But um, let's go ahead and open this and see what we have here. So this is another vintage nib, and this one is number 2968. And this one is a little bit of a stub. So that was one of the reasons why I got this one. And so let's see, so this is an SD. Oh God, this paper is terrible. <laughs> so sorry <laughs> this is definitely terrible paper okay so this is the sd uh that's a u new oh, i'm at nouveau is always a hard word for me to spell i always think there should be an x at the end french man nouveau bleu, or blue okay so this uh this ink is Hero Hero, and it's a cherry blossom color. Love this color ink. And it's, again, I'm getting so much bleeding on this paper. This paper is terrible, guys. I don't recommend it. Okay, this is a, this nib is a vintage 2968. Okay, so here we're definitely getting larger downstroke smaller side stroke but it's actually not as dramatic as the uh, journaler nib here so at this point I think I'm just hoping for a particular ink that doesn't fuzz on this paper because my goodness okay so this is uh, the blueberry color also in an SD and all like I, I think I said that these are all the regular size SDs uh, the, I find the oversize would probably be too big for me I've never held one but the the regular Esterbrook SD is a perfectly good size for for my hand and I like it I like it both unposted and posted actually I think the balance is good both ways okay so this is another vintage nib this is which one is this this is the 2668 so they have different tiers of nibs basically so um 2668 which this one is is sort of the less fancy less expensive version of the 9668 when they came out so this is smoother than this one. This one's more of like your student grade nib as opposed to sort of the fancier nib. I actually pay the same price for both of these, but, um, and I really like this one. I get more line variation off of this one than I do off of this one. I'll actually put a link to the website where that I looked at when trying to decide which nibs to get. Um, it's a great resource. It has basically writing examples for a lot of the nibs and tells you what the features are, etc. So this is the SD Blueberry with a vintage 2668 nib. And then what is this ink? Uh, this is Pelham Blue by Diamine. So this is Diamine. Um, blue 
And these inks look so much more vibrant on better papers. Um, so you're getting a little bit of difference between this line downward and this line side to side. Um, this is actually my favorite of the vintage nibs that I have, but they, they all have their charm and I like them all. Okay, so let's go to the next one, which is a lilac. I think this was the first Esterbrook that I got. This has a journaler nib as well. Um, it's the first one I got because I wanted to try the journaler nib. That's really what led me to these Esterbrook Estes. So this is an Esty Lilac. And as you can see, this one is different than the one up above that's in this other one. This one's much wetter in flow. Uh, okay, so Esty Lilac with a journaler nib. And depending on how you hold it, so if you hold it at a 45 degree angle, you're gonna get more variation than if you hold it up and down like that. I actually usually, for some reason, I'm writing with it up and down today, but um, this is more my writing, my natural writing angle. Um, so this ink, uh, so this was the one that I had a little bit of an incident with and ended up putting the wrong ink in here. So this is probably a little bit of Sailor, 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 uh, which was the original ink that was in here, but I accidentally filled it with Sailor Seboku, which is a permanent ink. And I accidentally filled it with that because that ink is actually in a another pen over here. <laughs> so, so there you go. And this one definitely has a completely different feel than this one. Um, but they're both, they're both really nice and they're clearly the same grind. I mean, you can see the, the same quality of line there, but uh, they definitely feel very different. All right, so this next one is uh, sort of a wackadoodle pen that I um, put a very unique combination in. I'll actually put the link to this video where I showed this a little bit more in detail. So this, I used a an, the same converter for the vintage Esterbrook nibs, but I managed to fit a Pelican M300 nib in here because the threads on the little collar that goes around this nib are the same as, or at least in my case, it's the same. I always say in my case because I don't want people to try it and then be like, oh my God, it didn't work. So. Okay, so this is the SD, oh, this is definitely a broad line. This is a M300 medium nib. You would think it would be broad by the look of this, but it isn't. So this is the honeycomb color. And this is with a Pelican M, oops, M300 medium. And then this ink is Diamine uh, Earl Grey. But oh my god, look at this bleeding on this page. This is god awful. Let me see. Let me look on the next page. Yeah, so you're also getting a lot of bleed through. Well, like I said, don't blame the pens, inks, or um, nibs for this issue. This is clearly this paper. And I thought maybe it was uh, one of the major brands fountain pen paper, but no, I'm not seeing this on any of the brands of fountain pen paper that I use. So I don't know what brand of paper this is, but um, not that great. So this is one of the, uh, it's either Junior Pocket or Pocket Juniors. Um, so this is supposed to be sort of a modern version of these. Um, the same size roughly, uh, of, this is the larger one of the vintage ones there. And uh, this was a special edition that came out in 2021. And it's it was all sort of a beach Caribbean type theme. And now I'm forgetting sunrise maybe. Mm, I've forgotten which color this is called. I'm just gonna call it the orange one. <laughs> and this has a, a specialty grind nib that I got somewhere else other than from, directly from Esterbrook. So this is a Pen Realm Imperial nib. I have to move my notes here because I'm on a different page now. So this is a medium Imperial nib. 
and the imperial nibs just have a little bit of a flat edge on this front side and are a little bit uh, stubbish. So um, one nice thing about both these and the Estes is that the Estes will take a, a standard size six Yovo nib and these will take a standard size five Yovo nib. So you can get specialty grind nibs and then put them in these pens by just unscrewing and screwing it back in. So this is the, let's call it the Pocket Junior. Junior uh, Orange with a Pen Realm uh, Imperial. And it's an Imperial Medium. And then this ink is Twisby Orange. So this nib, you get, so it's kind of like a cursive italic slash uh, stub. And you can get some reverse writing, um, but it's not very uh, consistent. But but you can't you can you can write with the other side. Uh, okay, I think that's. But this side is obviously the writing side. Lovely. And even though these pens, these junior pens, are quite a bit smaller, I actually and I prefer a bigger pen usually. They're actually very, very comfortable for me to hold. It's My grip is very compatible with these smaller pens and I really like it, which is why I have two. This was actually the first one that I got. This is just in the standard blue color that they had at the first in the first set of them. And then this also has a specialty grind nib. This has a, uh, what is called a Naginata Togi nib. So uh, in a fine. And that's kind of like a zoom nib. So uh, it has a curve to it and you can get different um, different thicknesses of line depending on the angle at which you write with it. I love this nib, this nib is awesome. Um, and in this pen, it's really awesome. So this is the Pocket Junior in blue with, and this was also from Pen Realm, Pen Realm, um, Naginata, Togi, fine. So, and then this ink, this really is Sailor Saboku. As you can see, there is some, <laughs> I should probably put slash Sailor Sailor I really hope that doesn't ruin either ink um, in the pen here, but you can see that this is darker and this is permanent. So, um, so let's do some, have some fun here. This is my normal writing angle at 45 degrees or roughly 45 degrees. If we go up to 90 degrees, the line is thinner. If we go down, the line is fatter. Um, quite a bit fatter and you can actually do reverse writing as well which is really really thin um, lovely this is a very very I, the fine especially I find very versatile and not a lot of grinders will do this grind on a fine so I really like um, that I can get sort of a normal line with my regular my regular grip but then I can also get a very fine line bit fatter line and super super fine this would probably be a good nib for sketching i would think but i don't use it for that even though i do have permanent ink in here so in theory i could all right so um i'm actually going to skip over these two vintage pens for the time being and then show you this nib which is in this hand turned acrylic pen so this is from a, this is made by a very small company. It's usually a one person deal uh, called Sindris Pen or uh, Sindris Designs, something like that. I will put a link to the Etsy shop where I got this. And um, it's in this really fun sparkly pink blank. Um, but I did put the scribe nib in here. Originally the scribe nib, nib came on the Cobalt SD and I swapped it out because I wanted to put a vintage SD nib on there, but because this takes a uh, Yovo nib, 
unit, I could just unscrew it from there and put it onto here. But uh, this pen does not post. But this pen is, uh, I really love the pen itself, <laughs> but that's not what I'm here to show you today, really. This nib is really, really interesting. So the scribe nib is sort of like an architect nib. So this is the Esterbrook scribe nib. And this is at my normal angle. So it's really going to depend on what your normal writing angle is, how this is going to write. Because, okay, so if I do my normal angle, angle you get a broader side stroke and a thinner up and down stroke, which is like an architect. And then if I go higher, I get thinner, but it's also thinner side to side. But if I go lower, it's a little bit broader, much broader on that way, on that stroke. And you can, you can get quite a bit of different variation here, actually. And you can also write on the reverse, really, really fine. Um, it's a really fun nib. I, I highly recommend it. And um, you can get a lot of a lot of different writing styles out of it. So let me go ahead and put that back. I'm now going to show you these and then I'm going to show you the nibs on those vintage pens, which I'm not going to be writing with today. Okay, so this is the composition the Camden composition with the journaler nib. You can see a little bit of sheen if I move it around, but this is a super sheening ink. You should see more than that. Um, this is, you know, fire and ice. You should definitely be seeing some of the fire, not just ice. <laughs> so this is with a vintage 9668 nib. This is a vintage nine, uh, 2968 nib. So very, very nice. And this is a vintage 2668, which um, should be similar to the, to these should be similar to each other. Um, but I do get some more line variation out of this one. But if you look, you actually do get quite a bit, quite a bit. I, I probably should just say you do get some slight line variation here because the downstroke is a little bit broader than the side stroke. This nib is definitely smoother than this nib, but I like the feel of this nib a little better. Okay, and here's another journaler nib. Uh, you, you can you can kind of see how it's different in its writing style. The ink could have something to do with that as well. And then here is with this Pelican M300 with the vintage nib adapter. Super fun. Um, and then this is the pocket with a Pen Realm Imperial nib, which can give you some nice variation. And then this is uh, another pocket that has a Pen Realm Naginata Togi. Um, really, really great variation on that one. And then here is the scribe nib. You probably could get some really fun, like if you were to do some block lettering, you probably could get some really fun effects on that. In fact, let me go ahead and let me just write. I mean, you, you can get lots of, you could have lots of fun with this with this particular nib. All right, and so the last things I wanna show you today, I'm gonna to go ahead and close this up. Okay, so at the end of the day, don't use Esterbrook paper for fountain pens. Oh my goodness, what a, what a fail there. Okay, so it's very rare that I feel that passionately about that, but that was terrible paper. For these fountain pens and these inks, I guess I should say, because it could work with some fountain pen and some ink somewhere. Um, so these are the vintage ones that I don't have filled with ink. So this one has a uh, 2312 nib, which is also a stub nib. This is a little bit um, broader of a stub, but what I wanna show you is that you can just screw these nibs out, and this is what the nib unit looks like, and then that screws into the top of this um, converter that is for the vintage nibs. Um, occasionally you will run across a nib that won't really fit, um, and I don't know why that is. It could be a, a vintage nib that won't fit, is what I'm saying, from Esterbrook. But sometimes it'll be a nib that just, I don't know, the, the threading is different or, you know, it's a different size or something like that. Let's see. Are these the same size? Yeah, see, the threading might actually be a little different on these because, well, I think it's just perspective. They look the same now that I've looked at them. This one is up a little further in the in the section than this one. So this one also comes right out. 
you just unscrew it. So, and this has some ink still left in it. But if you, um, if you find a vintage Esterbrook for like a few dollars and uh, it has a nib that you're interested in, you could get it just for the nib and then put it on an Esterbrook SD. So that's, that's an option. I just kind of wanted to introduce that. Um, and this is just a regular fine nib. This just came on here and, and it doesn't have a number. It just says fine. And this is, I've written with this before and it actually has a really nice, smooth, fine uh, line. It's pretty good. This one I've tried a few times, but it's it's a little bit more finicky, um, the, the broader stub there. Okay, so that is my Esterberg collection, but now we're at 30 minutes. You can see why I didn't want to add this to um, my year in review video because uh, these do have all kinds of really fun nibs in them and you can get some really fun effects. Uh, one of the reasons why I like these Estes and the other uh, Esterbrooks is that you can have a lot of customization uh, possibilities with them. So there we go. All right, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. Feel free to subscribe to keep track of future, future videos on my channel. And I hope to see you next time, but in the meantime, have a great day. Thanks so much, bye.